Hi, I'm Landon Whitsitt. Welcome back to Theo Academy and the second lesson in our series on foundations of Presbyterian discipleship. In our first lesson, we learned that before we talk about anything else, we have to know that God loves us. Despite all the things that we've done and left undone, despite all the things that we've said and left unsaid, this tendency of God to love us in spite of ourselves is called grace. Grace is a, a vital truth for us to grasp. And the first question we are asked when we become a member of a Presbyterian church begins with the phrase, trusting in the gracious mercy of God. Well, in this lesson, we want to take advantage of the confidence that God's grace gives us to explore the second part of that question. Do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Now, we shouldn't kid ourselves. If someone were to ask me, are you basically a good person or a bad person? I have to admit, I want to say that I'm pretty all right. I've never done any of the heinous things that I hear about in the news. I, I generally treat people with respect. I'm, I'm pretty much a good person. But if you're like me, there's always that nagging feeling in the back of my brain that just makes me feel uncomfortable. There's a nagging feeling present every day not just occasionally, but every day that I didn't do it right. Every day I wish that, that I could go back and do some things better. I wish that I could redo that conversation, for instance, with my spouse or, or, or my friend or my coworker. Every day I am aware that I didn't do life the way that I wanted to, the way that I knew I should. Now, theologically, the Bible calls this sin. And we need to admit that this makes us very uncomfortable. To call the ways that we live sinful makes us sound like we are the worst people ever. That we are the worst of the worst. Are we the worst of the worst? I, I, I don't really think that anybody says when they're, I don't know, five, six, seven years old, uh, when I grow up, I want to be evil. I want to be wicked bad. I want to be the kind of person that goes around exercising cruelty on all those around me. I want to be demonic in my wickedness toward every... I, I, I just don't think very many people do that. But it's like, it's like Ebenezer Scrooge. Uh, I don't think Ebenezer Scrooge started out saying, I want to be miserly. But you make miserly choices, and you keep on making miserly choices day by day, and you become a mean, crotchety, miserly old man, and you're never really sure how you got there. But the way you live your days is the way you live your life, and eventually that's what you've become. It is all the little choices that add up to the way we live our lives, and we get there by accident. We've all witnessed kids on a playground when things go bad. Here we have a, a bunch of ordinary kids playing well when suddenly everyone is picking on that one kid. Now, if you were to ask the kids before recess, do you want to do something mean today? D do you want to be a bully and pick on the other kids? They would all stare at you in disbelief. No, they would say, of course not. But all of a sudden, here on the playground, you've got a, a mob bullying this one kid, and nobody really knows how it happened. What was happening was everybody was making a little choice, and those little choices somehow melded together to be a, a bigger choice. And this happens on a community level. It happens sometimes in congregations. It happens sometimes at school board meetings. It happens uh, sometimes uh, with uh, um, the police in, in an uh, uncomfortable situation. It happens sometimes statewide or even nationwide or even uh, economy-wide or worldwide. And everybody somehow is making the same decision and everybody thinks, well, I'm not really responsible for it. I'm just a little tiny piece in this great big thing. But all of these little tiny pieces somehow get organized or correlated in the same bad direction. And 
wow, this terrible thing happens. Nobody wants to say, I'm responsible for poverty in America. Uh, nobody wants to say, I'm responsible for starvation in Africa. Uh, but somehow, we've got the whole world working in such a way that uh, people are going hungry, that people are uh, denied opportunity, that people are stuck in poverty for generation after generation. And Little by little, the things we do often add up to big and, and terrible realities. And, and when we realize that this is what happened, we're usually confused by it. Because as we went about our lives, living, making choices, everything seemed okay to us. This is the dirty little secret about sin. We often don't realize that what we're doing is hurting others because it feels okay to us. In fact, sometimes it's fun. <laughs> the, the anticipation of it is fun. The, the doing of it is fun. It is fun, for example, to, to tell somebody off. We say, the world would be better if somebody put that guy in his place. And well, I'm somebody. You know, sometimes our, our, our conflicts are with uh, the world out there. I'm trying to do what's right and the world is squashing me down and, and, and pushing me in the wrong direction. But a whole lot of my problem isn't that the world out there is evil. It's that it's me versus me. It's me saying, I want to do what's right. And it's me saying, I want to do this thing that time and again, I've acknowledged this is not the right way to talk to people. This is not the goal of your life. This is not the kind of person you want to be. And yet, again and again, I find myself in that same situation where I just want to squash that person. And I know it's wrong, but I want to do it. And so I do, and I love it in that moment. And then not very long afterwards, I recognize this was not right. This was not right. Turning from sin is only one part of what we promise when we join a Presbyterian church. We also say that we will renounce evil and its power in the world. And when we say evil, we are taking things to an entirely new level. Most of us can get our minds around changing our behaviors, the, the things that we've done and left undone, said and left unsaid. But, but what do we do when the issue is one of evil, of being so powerful, so big, so all-pervasive, that the actions of our little lives seem to amount to only a drop in the ocean. And to renounce evil in all of its forms is to say, I'm against that. I'm not capable by myself of making that go away. Uh, Jesus appeared to be much more capable at casting demons out of things than I am. But even though I can't stop it, I can't cast the demon out of this situation or that situation, I can recognize the wrongness of that. And I can say, I, I don't want to be part of this mob. I can't maybe stop this mob, but I'm at least going to walk home right now. And I'm not going to be a participant in this. And maybe I'm even going to have the courage to say, this mob bullying that we seven-year-olds are getting into right now, this is not right. Or maybe even, this is not God's will for us. This is not the goodness of life that God intends for us creatures. So I'm going to say we all ought to go home right now. I can't make the rest of you go home. I can't make the rest of you do what's right. But I'm going home right now. Sin and evil are uncomfortable things to talk about. We, we don't like this. We like to believe that while things aren't perfect, they're generally okay. 
And while Presbyterians don't want to rain on anyone's parade, we have always wanted to acknowledge that the world that we live in is a broken and fearful one. As our brief statement of faith says, we ignore God's commandments. We violate the image of God in others and in ourselves. We accept lies as the truth. We exploit neighbor and nature and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. Racial injustice abounds. Gender injustice abounds. Economic injustice abounds. Political injustice abounds. It can all seem very overwhelming. But the brief statement also reminds us that God's Spirit gives us the courage to begin somewhere. And that somewhere is turning from sin and renouncing evil in the world. We'll see you next time.